because now we're on our 16th year since 2003. We're spending $6 million a year for a, work, a uh, monitor to tell us what we can do and haven't been doing. We need to move on. We have plenty of commissions, advisory committees, and neighborhood committees dealing with public safety, and we ought to be able to take care of our business without having a consultant show up once a month or once every three months and tell us what's wrong. Uh, any other questions regarding our um, scheduled items? Uh, we do have the, 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 okay, so go ahead. Uh, any, go ahead, no, okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming and everybody who's been working so hard for so many years to create and to strengthen an independent police commission. Um, it is incredibly important and I want to make sure we take action to make that the reality that the voters intended. Um, but before we get into the details of the legislation, I feel it is important to address an incident which took place last week, which has highlighted yet again um, why this issue is so important, which is that our colleague, uh, former council member Mr. Wilson Riles, um, was arrested and um, and, and, and brutalized and improperly treated, it appears, in significant ways. And I want to say that this is very troubling. This reinforces why we need independent oversight. You know, there's a long history of misconduct, particularly directed against African Americans, and this is of great concern. And so uh, given that he is here, maybe I'll pause there and, and I don't know if you wanted to speak to this. Uh, in terms of the item that you just brought up, as uh, Council Member Kaplan mentioned, you're trying to deal with correcting the attitude and the approach and the racism that comes through how the Oakland Police Department deals with Oakland residents. What happened to me woke me up to the fact that it's not just the police department. It's also the zoning department and probably other departments of the city. So what came up to spark this incident was my going to the zoning department in order to complain about mistreatment and unjust approaches to what I was doing on my own property. I essentially asked a city employee to look at the city codes because he was asking me to do something that was not in the city codes. He refused to look at the codes. So I argued with him about that. As a result, three police officers, as I was leaving, I wasn't satisfied with what ha was happening, but I was leaving. I was walking down a hall. Three or four police officers came down that hall. They didn't say they were there to deal with me. They didn't say anything to me about arresting me. One of the officers stood in the way in a narrow hall and blocked me from leaving. And when I attempted to move around him, he grabbed me and ended up tripping me and throwing me on the ground. This is totally unacceptable. I ended up spending uh, the whole day at Santa Rita, sitting around with some other residents of Oakland, hearing about how unjust our government is towards all of us. Not just me as a council member, but this is happening to too many people. So I, I also want to make clear that believing in that does not mean thinking that all police are bad. Police are human beings who are neither all good nor all bad, and they are human beings that operate under a set of rules and procedures which can encourage or discourage different kinds of behavior. I'm Linda Kincaid with the Coalition for Elder and Disability Rights. Since 2012, Oakland resident Eleanor Frerix, age 96, has been held prisoner forcibly isolated, and her estate plundered. The perpetrators are Oakland-based legal assistants for seniors. James Trujeri, board of directors, is the primary abuser. 
All three have provided false information to the court. All three have perjured themselves in court documents. Since 2014, we have tried to report these crimes to Oakland Police Department. On each occasion, officers refused to take a report. In 2018, I sent a letter to Mayor Schaff and Chief Kirkpatrick. You have that letter before you. You also have the response from the Community Police Review Agency. The agency stated, in response to my complaint, that refusing to take a report and denying protection of the laws was not a violation of departmental policy. It is quite disturbing that OPD has a policy of disregarding crime and denying protection of the laws. And in the context of the discussions this evening, I would like to mention that Eleanor Frerichs is a quite wealthy white woman who married her neighbor and close friend who happens to be an African-American man. And that's when all hell broke loose. <laughs>